in this video, we are going to talk about finding holes of rational functions. So if you've been paying attention to the last couple of videos, I've talked about values that make the numerator equal to zero only are solutions or zeros. Values that make only the denominator equal to zero are vertical asymptotes. And I've talked about what do you do with these values that make both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero? Well, guess what? That's going to produce a hole in your graph of the rational function. So here we go. When does a rational function have a hole? If the multiplicity of a real zero in the numerator is greater than or equal to its multiplicity in the denominator, then the graph of the rational function has a hole at the corresponding input value. So in a nutshell, to make it pretty simple, when a value x creates a zero in both the numerator and the denominator. That is when you have a hole. So let's take a look at a couple examples, right? So one part of this was a little bit weird is this whole idea of a multiplicity, right? So I want to make sure I'm very clear on this. So if the multiplicity of a real zero in the numerator is greater than or equal to its multiplicity in the denominator, then the graph has a hole. So here's our first example where we see that we have um, a factor x minus 6 in both the numerator and the denominator. That produces a 0 of x equals 6, and the multiplicity on both of those is 1. So that's going to be a hole at x equals 6, because plug in 6, you're going to get a 0 in the numerator or the denominator. Because it says if the multiplicity is less than, excuse me, greater than or equal to its multiplicity in the denominator, that's going to be a hole. So this is an example where we definitely have a hole at x equals 6. Here, we see an example where we also have x equaling 6, making the numerator and denominator equal to 0. But if you think about it, the multiplicity in the numerator is 5, the multiplicity in the denominator is 3. So at the end of the day, what's going to actually happen to this function is that the x minus 6s are going to kind of reduce out of the denominator and the numerator. But because, again, the definition here, the multiplicity of the zero in the numerator is greater than the multiplicity in the denominator, that's going to be a hole at x equals 6. So if they're equal, like 1 and 1, or if the numerator has a greater multiplicity, that is going to be a hole as well. This final example is not going to be a hole because the multiplicity in the denominator is greater than the multiplicity in the numerator. This is actually going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals 6. So if you watch the video on vertical asymptotes, this was explained. At the end of the day, what's going to actually happen to this function is the two x minus 6s in the numerator are going to reduce with two of the x minus 6s in the denominator, and that's going to leave it x minus 6 to the third power in the denominator. So that means x equals 6 only makes the denominator equal to zero, which is a definition of a vertical asymptote. So just be careful if you have multiplicity greater than one, right? If it's if the multiplicities are one, it's pretty simple. You don't have to really think about it too much. But if the multiplicities are greater than one, you just have to make sure you understand this rule. All right, so let's look at a much easier example here. So if we look at this function that's beautifully already factored for us, making it so nice, the first thing I want to do I identify is identify all of your values that make zero, right? In the numerator, we have x equals negative 2, x equals 1 third, add the 1, divide by 3. In the denominator, we have x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 4. So again, we see, is there a value? Well, x equals negative 2. Well, I think I just wrote that messily here. Let me rewrite that. x equals negative 2 right there. So we notice that at x equals negative 2, both the numerator and the denominator are going to be 0. And the multiplicities on those are both 1s. They're both tied. So again, this is the is a hole, right? So there's going to be a hole at x equals negative 2. But might as well talk about the other values. Now, x equals negative 4 only makes the denominator equal to 0. So that's going to be a vertical asymptote. Watch the video on that if you haven't already. And x, 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 <laughs> x equals 1 third, that is going to be a 0 or a solution or an x-intercept of the graph because 1 third only makes the numerator equal to 0. Uh, now, this video is focusing only on holes, but it's worth it to talk about what's happening at these other values. All right, now how do you find the location of the hole? Because what we just figured out, let's go back to the previous problem, that the hole is located at an x value of negative 2. But a hole is just a dot. It's, a, it's an empty dot on the graph. And dots on graphs have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So the x coordinate is negative 2. The question is, what's the y coordinate? So find the value for the x 
makes both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. So that's only half the battle. That, that's easy. We just explained how to do that. But how do we find the y coordinate of the whole? Now understand there's nothing at the whole. So if you say, hey, where's the hole? Well, I can't show you because there's nothing there. It's a hole. It's empty. I can't show you where it's at. It's nothing. But okay, okay, okay. I know there's nothing at the hole, but where is that nothing located? So even though the hole is not a point because it's a hole, it's, it's like an open point. So we still need to identify where this open point is. Again, the x coordinate's easy. We've already identified that. How do you find the remaining y coordinate? Here it is. Remove the factors that are the same from the function, then plug the x coordinate of the whole into the remaining parts to get the y coordinate. So I'm going to say this one more time. To find the corresponding y coordinate of the whole, remove the factors that are the same in the numerator and denominator. Plug that x value into what was remaining. So let's go back to this problem real quick here. So what we're trying to do is say, okay, I've identified there's a hole at negative 2. Okay, remove those factors, and what's left is the 3x minus 1 and the x plus 4. Plug negative 2 back into those factors to get the y coordinate of the hole. So if I do 3 times negative 2 minus 1, that's my numerator. And if I do negative 2 plus 4 in the denominator, so let's see here. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. And the denominator, negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So that is the y coordinate of my hole. So my hole is officially located at negative 2, and the y coordinate is negative 7 halves, or negative 3.5, if you will. That's how simple it is, right? That's not overly complicated. So again, I'm listing this as a point, but really a hole is not a point. It's an open dot, an open point, but you still need to identify where it's located. All right, let's talk a little bit more about this before we dive um, too far in. But you know, let, let's take a look at the graph real quick here. Um, so we talked about there was, you know, let's talk about a couple of things that we learned already just by looking at the function. We did already see that at negative four, there's a vertical asymptote. Okay, that's awesome. We just identified that at negative two, comma negative seven halves, we do have this hole right here. Look at that hole. Again, there's nothing there, but I had to put a point to represent where that nothing in this is. And remember, the other aspect was that at one third was a solution or a zero. We see that right there. So we see the vertical asymptote, we see our hole, and we see our um, solution there. Now, let's talk a little bit about these limits, what's going on there. Because we've talked about this in the past, but I want to make sure I'm very clear on this. So what's happening at negative two? Well, if I plug negative 2 in the function, I get DNE because it makes the denominator equal to 0. And anything that makes the denominator equal to 0 is not in the domain. Again, go back and watch the video on domain of rational functions. So negative 2 is clearly not in the domain because it does, in fact, make the denominator equal to 0. And we've now learned in this video that that creates this hole. Now, what about the limit as x approaches negative 2? Well, we've talked about this before. As you approach negative 2 from the left and from the right, notice the two sides are coming together. Where are they coming together? Negative 7 halves. So the limit does exist. Now listen, this is a discontinuity. This in a holes, you know, it's clearly a spot in the graph where you have to lift up your pencil to draw it. It's, it's not continuous. And remember, we've talked about the definition of what it means to be continuous. And number one, at that value, you need to have a point, and we don't have a point here. So clearly not continuous. But the limit does exist because the definition for a limit to exist says as the two sides approach that x value, in this case negative 2, they have to be coming together at the same value. And that is certainly true for this graph. Their two sides are coming together at negative 7 halves. So let's clarify that. Now listen, this, this definition can be a little bit ugly, but let's try to make sense of it. If the graph of a rational function has a hole at x equals c, c just being random value, then the, then the location of the hole can be determined by examining the output values corresponding to input values sufficiently close to C. What that is saying is, let's examine the limit. Let's find out what happens as we get really, really close to C from the two sides. If the input values from the left side are going towards some value L, and same thing with the right side, then that is the limit. So that means you're going to have a hole at C comma L because 
at C. Well, there's technically nothing. There's a hole there. But as you approach C from the left side and the right side, you're getting closer to this value. So again, this is where we also introduced to you this little plus sign and minus sign here. So this is saying, okay, let's specifically approach C from the right. And let's specifically approach C from the left. And if the two sides are coming together at the same value, the left side's at L, the right side's at L, then that means the overall limit is L. And that's exactly what's going on in the graph here. As we approach negative two from the left, we're getting closer to negative seven halves. As we approach negative two from the right, we're getting closer to negative seven halves. So the overall limit as X approaches negative two is negative seven halves. Left side, right side, both negative 7 halves. Since the two sides are coming together, the overall limit does exist, and life is great. But at negative 2, D and E, nothing. So unfortunately, the limit does not, or the limit exists, excuse me. I'm not continuous, is what I meant to say. All right, let's dive into a couple more examples here. All right, this is like a very similar function, just kind of switched around. So I want to make sure we spend some time talking about what's going to happen here. So again, Holes are values that make both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. So maybe I'm going to go ahead and factor this numerator, x plus 3 times x minus 3. And I very quickly realized that x equals negative 3 is a hole because it makes both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. Okay, so what's happening at x equals positive 3? Well, that only makes the numerator equal to 0. So that's going to be a solution. Okay, that's a, that's, a, that's a 0. All right, the next question is where is the hole located? Well, remember, to find the y-coordinate of the hole, we're going to ignore the, the two factors that were the same, and that's going to leave us with just x minus 3. We're going to take the negative 3 and plug it into there, and that's where the hole is located. So negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6, so that is where my hole is going to be located. So remember, to find the y-coordinate of the hole, ignore the common factors from both numerator and denominator, plug the x value of the hole into what is left over. All right, let's do this problem over here as well. So it's the same problem, similar kind of, but this time the numerator is the x plus 3, and the denominator is x plus 3 times x minus 3. So once again, we do realize that at x equals negative 3, we have a hole because it makes both the numerator and the denominator equal to 0. But what about the x minus 3 also in the denominator? Well, that's going to be a vertical asymptote because it only makes the denominator equal to 0. Okay, so how do we find the x-coordinate of, or excuse me, the, the x-coordinate is negative 3. How do we find the y-coordinate? So again, process is pretty simple cancel out or ignore the two factors from numerator and denominator that were the same. And what is left is 1 over x minus 3. Plug negative 3 into what is left over, and we get 1 over negative 6. So that is the y coordinate of my hole in this function. So I know these two functions look very similar, but they're extremely different when we actually take a look at the graphs. They both do have holes, though, at negative 3, but those holes are located in different spots. So here are those two graphs. So remember this first graph, we had no vertical asymptote, but we did have a hole at negative, oh boy, I can't write. We did have a hole, if you remember, at negative 3, comma, negative 6, and we could see that hole right there. And in this graph over here, we did have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3 because it made only denominator equal to 0, and our hole was located at negative 3, comma, negative 1, 6. You'll see it right there. Negative 1, 6 is just below the x-axis. Now, let's talk about those limits, right? So what about the limit as x approaches negative 3 for this function? Well, as we approach a hole from the left side and the right side, notice the two sides do come together. Where do they come together? Negative 6. So the limit does exist. But what happens at negative 3? Well, that's a big, beautiful DNE, which is why I'm not continuous at negative 3. Same thing over here. We could say, what is the limit as x approaches negative 3 for this function? And the left side of the hole, the right side of the hole are approaching the same value, which is, of course, negative 1 6. But what happens at negative 3? Once again, it's a hole, so DNE. This is why I'm not continuous. 
All right, let's do one more example. Okay, so once again, let's find the whole of this function. So first I have to figure out what makes both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. So I'm gonna do x minus four times x plus four. Gotta do a little bit of factoring. It makes it a lot easier to find the values that make zero. And let's see here, I have x plus four and x plus five in the denominator. Check my factoring if you don't think I'm right. All right, so let's see here. So what value makes both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero? Well, that's going to be x equals negative 4. You'll see that right here and right here. All right, what about x equals positive 4? That's going to be a 0 because it only makes the numerator equal to 0. And what about x equals negative 5? That's going to be a vertical asymptote because it only makes the denominator equal to 0. But the big question is, how do I find the y-coordinate of the whole? I know it's located at negative 4. So what we do here is we cancel out or just ignore the factors that were the same. So just kind of... Just kind of pretend they weren't there for a second. So what's left is the x minus 4 and the x plus 5. And then we plug negative 4 into what's left over. So that's going to be a negative 8 on top, negative 4 minus 4, and a positive 1 in the denominator. So that means my whole is located at negative 4 comma negative 8. But again, that's going to be an open dot because nothing's there. Now the left side and the right side of that whole are going to come together. So the limit as x approaches negative 4 for this function. Man, my handwriting is terrible today. I'm sorry, guys. Um, the limit as x approaches negative 4 is negative 8 because the two sides will come together, but they'll just never get to negative 8 because what happens at negative 4? Well, that's a DNE. It's a hole. Nothing could happen there. So that's why we're not going to be continuous at this hole. One last note I want to make about holes. Holes are called removable discontinuities. Not a huge thing for you to remember right now, but the idea is that in this case, the x plus 4s got removed, right? Because they were the same factor on top and bottom. So they would technically reduce to a 1 and be removed, and which creates a hole. And that's why holes are called removable discontinuities. It also makes sense because what is a hole? It's a point that you remove. So they are definitely discontinuities in the graph, and they are what we call removable discontinuities.